I request Dr. Tripti Lakshmi, ma'am, to please come onto the stage and uh, give her lecture. Thank you. Of the dais, today I am going to present one paper, like named "Individualized Homeopathic Management of." A symptomatic adenotonsillar hypotropy, a prospective observational study. So, uh, as this study was conducted by a multi center observational study, so let us know about all the writers. So, here, like Dr. Hema Bindu, ma'am, from RRI uh, Hyderabad, already you people will be knowing to her. Then Roja Madam and Dr. Priyanka Ma'am, Dr. Nabita, all are from CCRH, New Delhi. Then Dr. Ratansil and myself, we both are from, while working at the Regional Research Institute, Agartala. Then Dr. Binita from this one, National Homeopathy Research Institute of Mental Health, Health Kotayam. Then uh, like uh, and uh, mostly like uh, Manchanda sir, currently uh, director of NCT Delhi, and rest all writers you can see. As this, uh, it's my privilege. Uh, like uh, today, I am able to present this. Give me that exposure to working under all these patients and to come up with an article which is published in Homeopathy. Let's go inside. While going for a research paper, first we should know what is the rationale or background of that paper. So here we are working in the adenotonsillar hypertrophy because globally adenotonsillar hypertrophy is the most prevalent upper respiratory disorder tract disorder. And here, what we are planning to do, like in this study, we are evaluating Eco. Eco is there. Okay. We evaluated the potential role of individualized homeopathic medicine, uh, 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 role of individualized homeopathic medicine in the management of adenotonsillar hypertrophy in pediatric age group or in children. So, what methods, like as it is one multicentric observational study, so mostly five centers out of 24 centers of CCRH, this study was conducted under five centers like mostly Simla, Noida, Agartala, Hyderabad and uh, this uh, Kerala, Kotayam. Ethical issues, whenever we will take any research, pro, um, like uh, any research protocol or any research program before that we should have safety issues for that behind that we have to very clear about ethical issues so here for ethical issues what major steps we have taken this study protocol is an accordance, accordance with declaration of Helsinki uh, and another thing is ethical guidelines from bio, biomedical research on human experimentation of India was taken. Apart from that, again, internal institutional ethical clearance also required, which has been conducted within the 20th um, Institutional Ethical Committee of CCRH. Apart from that, for any clinical trial, we should go for CTRI registration. So that also was done. The study was registered in the clinical trial of registry India. Then while going for any case, before that we should keep some parameters, which case to take, which not to take. For that we say have some set of for inclusion and exclusion criteria. Here we are going AD, it's like adenotonsillar hypertrophy in pediatric age group. But here we have fixed the age group for 3 to 10 is because in this case, children are more prevalent to come up with adenoid tonsils, hypertrophy of adenoid tonsils of either gender. 
apart from that what we have done like radiological evidence of adenotonsillar hypertrophy will be there uh, these are the two evidence then we are searching for signs and symptoms of ath like uh, maybe sleep apnea then snoring mouth breathing or difficult breathing during sleep like all the symptoms then uh, if we are getting all this with enlarged tonsils or both adenoids and tonsils both are present then apart from that when these things are ready we have to take consent of the patient so initially we tried to in because they are children pediatric age group first we tried to take informed consent from the parents or guardians who at, uh, they are uh, reached to the opd then simultaneously we tried to take consent from the patient if possible okay in exclusion criteria we have taken people who are having high rise of fever mostly 40 degree or 104 degree fahrenheit apart from that any neuromuscular disorder is there or any life threatening illness suppose cancer or uh, aids or tuberculosis is there or any severe osa which required immediate surgery apart from that any craniofacial anomalies like clipped lip uh, clipped lip or clipped uh, palate then any previous uh, history of surgery like uh, nasopharyngeal surgery or any pharyngeal or adenoid surgery is there we excluded those type of cases then if we are going like all total what we are going we have to make one flow chart how we should proceed that study so initially while going we have screened Three, three, four, three hundred forty patients, like children. Out of that, only two zero two were enrolled, and those two zero two only totally analyzed in the method of intention to treat till end. So why uh, there is a discrepancy three forty to two zero two because one thirty eight uh, children were excluded because few are not setting in the age criteria as per inclusion. like uh, 34 were excluded for that apart from that 36 children are parents are not willing to give consent as it, the child have to go invasive procedure like that an ratio for that they have to continue the lateral cephalometric radiograph then again high fever itself is a exclusion criteria for that four patients are excluded then if people are having normal x ray even if enlarged uh, tonsils are there those cases are also excluded among them like 29 people are there and x ray which has not been taken during baseline four uh, students uh, four uh, children are there whose x ray was not taken during baseline and others like any other parameters like any neuromuscular disorder or cognitive deficit those are four students which are excluded so all total 138 were excluded then while continuing each month follow up for continuous 12 months that time also few follow up loss was there loss to follow up at different months of study period was 57 if we are going for enrollment then now the background of the uh, procedure was completed now we have to go for enrollment here what we did initially we went for a, a verbal screening for, for the in that what we will do like while doing verbal screening we have to follow that exclusion criteria in that like uh, initially just search for the sign and symptoms of adenoid what are the common signs and symptoms mostly we are going for snoring nose block mouth breathing or uh, like any difficulty or like sleep apnea obstructed sleep apnea so if these uh, symptoms are present the patient like verbal screening is over then we have to take the patient and go for physical examination whether there is any inflammation of the adenoid or tonsil is there if yes then send the patient for lateral cephalometric radiograph like that an ratio if the patient is having after coming from that x ray report if the patient is having enlarged adenotonsillar hypertrophy then 
take the consent then you and start enrolling the patient uh, so that enrollment of the patient was starting like after all the evidence was ready patient is ready for case taking that time uh, patient we took for homeopathy consultation as per csf like case con uh, recording format designed for this study and uh, during that time consent also has been taken and all these patients data were anonymized for analysis and reporting purpose because whenever we are recording if the patient's identification was there we may bias so that time we have to delete all identification and take all the data for further analysis and report okay treatment plan then when we will take case we have to land up with some treatment here what we did already the title itself indicates we have gone for individualized homeopathic medicines so uh, the same process we have undergone what we did initially after taking case we have to take all the total case according to csf format and we have analyzed and construct the totality of the patient after that only we have to go the for reference of the repository like here we have used that software radar 28 and homeopath 29 then we have to conclude once individualized medicine which is done by our final choice matria medica who is decided by our matria medica after that what we did patients were given individualized homeopathic medicines as per the guidelines of organ and of medicine by Hanuman. Then this is only prescription. Again, instruction to be followed while intake of medicine. So during that time, the medicines which we have collected was like a were produced from a pharmacy with good manufacturing practices. Certification was there. Then the selection of potency and dose was left on the treating physician uh, so that they will decide as per the requirement of the patient. Then all these medicines were given in the centesimal scale, four pills in 30 sized globules in clean tongue as per instruction in our uh, uh, homeopathic principles. Then during this treatment period, if patient come up with any acute episodes or any acute exaggeration, like patient is having all the rights to go for any uh, adjuvant conservative treatments if required and uh, or any like uh, if required pre pre like patient can go for any ac uh, acute medication in homeopathy depending on the picture of the patient code depending on that position of uvula oropharynx and that soft palate you can able to evaluate and you can grade accordingly and from uh, every quarterly interval every three months interval you can match with your baseline another thing like uh, primary was score second was malampati score third one is your an ratio adenoid and nasopharynx ratio in the, uh, that already uh, initially only we told ki lateral cephalometric radiograph uh, we have to see so for why we are using this an ratio for the accuracy sensitivity and specificity of the adenoids and this because this is one invasive method so parents are not allowing the children for that we have done only during baseline after six months and after 12 months and it was done by using Fujioka method that is is the more accurate method where we can able to find out the exact measurement of the adenoids And then we are coming to secondary outcomes. These all are primary outcomes. In secondary outcomes, we have taken SRBD scale. That is nothing but sleep related breathing disorder. In that, because this is one pediatric age group, so SRBD in that we have taken PSQ scale, like pediatric sleep questionnaire scale. In that, these are the scales which are divided into some subunits. In that, like primarily, uh, more uh, like highlighted headings are snoring or breathing second one is sleeplessness and third one is your 
behavior what any changes are there so these are the seats and headings where we have to monitor and what we did we these scales like sleeplessness behavior breathing all these are assessed by uh, like uh, before only that's 3 months 6 months then 9 months and 12 months using that standard four rating scale other than that with that patient will not come up only those things other symptoms also will be there which will be affect our patient may uh, get disturbed by doing the daily activities in th in that what all things will come mostly uh, this also we have used that analytical tool uh, four item rating scale like mostly daytime sleepiness will be there so when child will go the child will sleep unable to perform in the school so uh, and another thing is like uh, nightmares enuresis a uh, sore throat tonsil pain will be there and some patient will come with headache hyponasal speech nasal uh, congestion or morning they were unable to get up then what auxiliary measures we have taken so patients who are uh, like any time a patient have come up with some serious conditions so they are we are allowed the patient to take some support of adjuvant uh, con uh, like any conventional treatment in case of any sudden acute episodes or all medical management changes uh, were recorded during that time like how many adverse events have been taken how many acute episodes have taken for uh, like how many patients come up with acute episodes not all but few will be getting multiple times and severe acute episodes few will have acute exacerbations multiple times so those should be recorded so that during data analysis all these things should be assessed at the end of the study adverse event for any research things adverse events are most important we should be focused so what are adverse events it should be recorded during the full study period then statistical analysis now we are having all the scores multiple scores are there multiple questionnaires are there x ray plates are there we, this is the right time how we are we using our analytical tools to come to an conclusion so here after getting all the data then first we used that spas like uh, statistical package for social science no spas uh, sorry uh that's past version 22 we have used then for uh, like after getting all the data for continuous data we have used that um, pa uh, um, parametric tests and for uh, ordinal data we have used non parametric tests because few things when you are seeing uh, all episodes that will be coming under ordinal data so for those data so we are using all non parametric tests and when we are taking questionnaires that time we we are getting some continuous data that time we are using all parametric tests but in these cases what happens 57 pa pa patients which are unable to complete the follow up for 12 months in between this case patients are unable to complete their follow up they dropped out so to we are putting that methodology intention to treat where we have to stretch each and every patient for the analysis till end without missing any patient so for that what we did for the missing values calculated by multiple imputation method for continuous data and for uh, ordinal data we did that uh, last follow up forward last observation carry forward method for ordinal data and the data were calculated and further analyzed as change of the uh, change from baseline mean till 3 months 6 months 9 months and 12 months then after so many data are there what we did we have taken because every time we are comparing with baseline at every quarter for that only here we are taking more than two time period comparison for that we have taken repeated anova and it was like very clear repeated major analysis of variance was performed as the observation comprised more than two time points for the, because four times here we are comparing for that only repeated anova was taken then 
for that, any significance of the case, we have some 95 percent confidence interval with some p value. Here, from beginning only, we have taken uh, this study will be significant if the p value will be less than 0 0.05. Let's come the result. Oh, sorry, again. Here, uh, like uh, from the demographic data, what we got, the mean age of enrolled children was 6.59 plus minus 2.15 years, like most probably 4 to 8 years. Then, morely male predominant is there, 56.4 percent male uh, children are getting compared to 43.6 percent female children are getting. Apart from that, the mean duration of ATS at the time of enrollment was 2.59 plus minus 1.81 years. So if you are seeing this table, you can easily, uh, I don't have a pointer, okay. If you are seeing that first one, what are scales we have taken? Like uh, this heading is outcome of treatment. Under outcome, we are having two primary outcome and secondary outcome. Primary outcome contents of all adenoid symptom score, other symptom score, like how we are missing two values for that. But that one also is significant. Apart from that, in secondary outcome, we are taking SRBD PSU scale, where we are considering the sleep, snoring or breathing, and behavior. In all this severity of SRBD, all these four headings, you are getting the significance, repeated ANOVA 0 0.001. So when you are seeing this analysis, you can easily able to understand like uh, <laughs> there is a specific potential role of individualized homeopathic medicine in the management of symptomatic adenotonsillar hypertrophy because this study shows that significance. Any doubt? Okay, we'll go next. Okay. Come up with remedial part. We can't, go, still now we went only for that parameters and uh, analytical tools, assessments. Now we have to come up to the homeopathic medicines. What individualization, uh, individualized medicine we have used. So here like almost 23 medicines are used for 202 patients. And very clearly mentioned like uh, what are the prescription and how many patients we have prescribed, number of cases of that prescription. And second prescription, when there is a change or patient required any intercurrent remedy or when remedy is not giving any significant result, that time we have to change the result and go for again uh, reanalysis, reevaluate the case, second prescription. If not improved, go for any intercurrent or antimyosmetic prescription. Now by seeing this only, you can able to understand this ATH, when you go for a RCT, because this is one observational study, which is very primary step or like formal information. When you will go and develop a pillar above it, when you will go for RCT, initial eight are the remedies, which are covering maximum number of cases will be the shortlisted remedies. Mostly your calcarea carb, calcarea phos, phosphorus, silesia, then your tuberculinum, Lycopodium, pulsatilla will be this eight, uh, eight remedies. You can take off like spe this specific eight remedies and it's how it works on ATH. So here, while continuing these 202 cases, mostly what happened, 72 children were reported of acute exaggeration like 72 children are come up with 135 episodes of acute exaggeration. So in that, what we can able to do, we can able to manage only 90 episodes uh, were managed homeopathically, but another 45 episodes with the help of conventional medicines and in the, under that mostly antibi antibiotics and antipyretics were mentioned and in some cases where severe nose block were there, nebulization also was done. Then this is the article where it got published, like uh, it was received on 9th June 2022, accepted on 5th January 23 and published on 5th April 2023. Okay, 
if we will go to the highlights part, after knowing this part, you know about all the whatever happened in this uh, study. So now what discussion we should do regarding this? So here what we are telling, this prospective multi-center observational study aim to explore the potential role of individualized homeopathic medicine in adenotonsillar hypertrophy. Uh, uh, apart from that, here we are telling uh, individual homeopathic medicines were found not only to be associated with reduced the subjective symptoms of adenoids simultaneously, it restores or uh, it resolves the adenoid hypertrophy if you are considering this AN ratio, Malampati score and with improvement of the quality of sleep by that SRBD PSQ score as assessed by this score. And even you can able to avoid the surgical intervention or surgical treatment options because most of the people will go for surgery. Then another uh, thing already I have shown on that uh, remed prescription table, like these are the remedies which you can shortlist of best candidates for the testing in future control trials without compromising the basic homeopathic principle of individualization. Even if you are taking this eight specific remedies, but simultaneously you should not compromise our basic homeopathic principles of prescription depending on individualization of homeopathic medicines. Then another thing is design control trial in future. If we are going for highlight, what are the highlight things in this study? Like mostly the in summary, <coughs> this is nothing but enlargement of adenoid has troublesome symptoms in children uh, which is presented by obstructive sleep apnea, breathing difficulty, snoring, nose block. Uh, uh, and behavioral issues in children. So here, and since uh, a sincere attempt was taken as an observational multi-center study to evaluate the individualized homeopathic medicines was conducted on 202 children suffering from ATH and improvement was observed in ATH related symptoms, quality of sleep, AN ratios uh, and administering individualized homeopathic medicines for a period of 12 months follow up and the positive outcome of this observational study need further validation by conducting future RCTs. Okay, this is the reference side. If you want to read this article, you can go this side and download and read it in detail. Finally, I want to give my heartful thanks and immense towards CCRS and currently working institute, gyms and all the authorities of the expo and especially uh, by the, Dr. Baide Imam. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Please come up with so much for an, oh, a very good research paper on uh, 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 an invite lecture on this uh, uh, tonsillar hypertrophy, adeno and tonsillar hypertrophy ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. for. We are very happy to be on this stage. Uh, you are you have welcome you have come here and i really thank uh, jim's uh, dr navin pavaskar sir uh, where he has sent such a nice research papers for our pla in in the, in this platform ma'am this is a big thank you from bottom of our heart uh, just uh, i request um, uh, bainu sharma ma'am please come and felicitate yoga expert in Hyderabad and who is the founder of, am I audible? <laughs>